What is going on YouTube? My name is Calvin. I go by Calsoscope. And in this video today, I'm going to be showing you how to get to a design that you see as such on my screen with Jerry Judy, who was doing his little dance on him yesterday. But I'm going to show you guys in Photoshop how to get to your own glow design. So without further ado, let's get into it. Alright guys, so the first thing that we have to do when we're on a design is pick our image. Now, you can get your image from Getty Image, wherever you're going to get it. I don't know, I get my pictures from Getty Image. And I'm sorry if you hear in the background somebody is cutting his lawn or something. Whenever I want to record, it feels I feel like there's always a distraction that's trying to get in my way. But it's fine, we're going to do this. So, the first thing we need to do is mask out Lamar Jackson. Now you can use Select and Subject if you want. And then Refine and go over with the pen tool and stuff like that. So that's what I'm going to use and I'm just going to quickly refine everything with my pen tool and once I'm done with that and I might use a little bit of lasso tool those are two great things to start mixing in when you're trying to just mask little things out because for the little areas you can use the lasso tool then the bigger areas like use a pen tool for example. So I'm going to do that real quick and then we will be right back. Alright so we're back. I pretty much have everything masked out. Now there's one small problem I guess you would call it. I wouldn't call it a problem just one hurdle that we have to get over and that is the defender and Lamar Jackson touching his hand. So you have to make the decision are we going to have to include this defender in the picture and we know that when you're doing Instagram dimensions it's like 1080 so it's 4 by 5 so you can plan that plan that ahead and what I'm looking at is I'm gonna be able to get a little bit of defender in there probably and probably need to actually to make it look more realistic even though it's unrealistic because it's low I guess but you want to have the defender in there too so what you're gonna to want to do at first is just mask everything out so we're gonna hit our layer mask to mask everything out um, I'm probably not gonna need any of this bottom part so I didn't go too in-depth with masking at all of his gloves but you do want to pay, pay attention to some of the little details that might be on the side of the dimensions that is going to be in the in the ratio. So I'm just going to go in and kind of just do a little bit. You don't have to do so much detail on the extraneous subject because that's not the focus. But you don't want your your masking to look really wild and not not well treated like you actually cared about the design, right? So we're done with that now I'm going to hit the layer mask tool so now we have just our mask and also one thing that you guys are gonna want to do is hit Q and you can actually preview your mask before you like just go into the layer mask because you can always undo but hitting Q lets you preview it before you want to press that button so I'm seeing a couple things I need to fix right here like this doesn't make any sense this goes beyond goes into the grass so we don't want that in there there's always some little things I got to tweak once I get onto the actual layer mask, which is fine. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have these two together. I'm going to have two separate masks of each. So I'm gonna just make a duplicate and I'm gonna say combined. And I'll put that under a red layer, I guess. We can put it on red. And then I'm just gonna merge these two together. And after I merge these two together, I'm going to go in again with whatever selection tools you want to use. Right here, I think it would be best to use pen tool. And I'm going to mask out separating the mask of the defender on Lamar Jackson. So I'm going to go in and do that very quickly. And then we will se separate the mask. So I'm going to just go through and do that and then I'll be back. All right, so both of my masks are now refined. So I'm going to go into a new a new uh, composition. I like to do 1080 by 1350 for Instagram, but here's what I've been doing. I've been doing 1080 by 1350, but I've been going to three, uh, 300 pixels per inch because I don't know. Something about me is like, what if I want to print these out one day? So maybe I want to do pixels per inch of a higher resolution because when you print, you need higher resolution. So that's why I've been doing 300 pixels per inch. You can't really see that much of a difference, and I don't know. That's just my opinion, but 4x5 is what you have to focus on, and 1080 is the max Instagram size. Okay, so once I have this group, I can just copy it and I'm going to paste it into here. And now I'm going to choose how large that I want my subject to be in this photo. And this may vary between the edits, so 
once I have my mask, I'm going to just right click on my layers. This is the defender layer. I'm going to right click, convert him to a smart object, right click and convert Lamar to a smart object. Okay. Very cool. And these are going to have to get sized together. So I feel like that it will be pretty good for the sizing. Um, you don't want them to be colossal. I mean, you could do whatever you want. That's not, it's not uh, up to me. It's up to you guys. But then let's set our background to, I see that Lamar has this purple on him. So I'm going to go almost to, to a dark, almost to black, but just a slight hint of purple. And that's going to be my background for now. Maybe even closer to dark, like almost black, literally. All right. So something like that. All right. So now we're going to get into the fun, the more fun part, not the funnest part, but the more fun part. So we need to mask out the places that we want to glow. So if you want this to glow, the lines to glow, it's really up to you what you want to be glowing on here. And going into this, I kind of think I want the eights to be glowing, especially, and I want these these ornaments to be glowing and everything on the helmet because the, when the helmet's glowing it makes the thing pop like crazy okay so let's just go in and we're gonna start doing our masking the first thing I'm gonna mask out is my eight so I'm only gonna mask out the inside of the eight you don't want to just start masking out full things and just making it look really bad because that's not detail work right so I'm gonna mask out the eight and I'm only gonna do this one in full speed and then the other one other things I mask out I'm gonna do in slow speed but I'm on the pen tool um, make sure you have combined shapes on when you're doing the pen tool because I've gotten messed up with that a bunch of times G Lou had to tell me like man you're doing this wrong so I was like what but just use the pen tool and when you hold down on the pen tool you can curve it wherever you want to go but just hold down on the pen tool make a nice crispy mask okay these masks have to be crispy or your edits won't come out crispy all right man so make your nice little mask make a selection new selection for the pen tool and then with the pen tool again you're going to mask out the centers and with the centers you're going to still make the same shapes you were making before just going around pretty carefully i probably should be even a little bit more careful but it's okay and we're going to subtract that from the selection and we're going to do the same on this subtract it from the selection so we got it all together Make selection, subtract from selection, okay? So you're gonna go around and you're gonna do this on all the parts that you want to be glowing. So if you want the eight to glow, do the same thing. If you want the the logo for the Ravens to glow, do the same thing. And now I'm gonna show you guys how to do the face mask as well, because that's kind of uh, particular, but I'll show you guys how to do that as well. But once I'm done with that, uh, masking out everything, we'll be back. All right, so I got all my white masked out that I want to be there, all the white and what I like to do for that is just save it to a selection. So I go to select, save my selection, and I'll go white, glow, Lamar, and that's all the white that I want to be there. So I can actually deselect, don't worry, because if you load it back in and you can go white, glow, Lamar, all right? So then we have to just do the purple real quick, and the purple is doing the same thing, but make sure you guys save your selections and that'll help you out a lot. Also, what I'm going to do is Put a levels adjustment on it's in that semicircle where all the adjustments are and i'm going to bring my levels down on lamar jackson now sometimes you can right click on this and use blend options and blend options is going to help you out with just setting the blend but sometimes it just looks a little bit weird and yeah i, I don't know sometimes i don't use it really but sometimes i do it's up to you guys some a lot of the time but sometimes levels adjustment can help you when you're using blend options but levels adjustment in general should do the trick most of the time so you kind of just want to make it dark since you're on, going to be on a dark frame and that's going to help it glow so we're going to do the same thing to buddy over here and drop his glow down as well not his glow but his brightness okay so we're just going to add those at remaining selections for the purple and then i'm going to start adding the glow in all right so everything is masked out now that i want to be glowing um, as far as the base glows, we can add a source of light, but that'll be later. So I'm not going to speak on that now. So what you're going to want to do now is add a new layer and I'll just title this one white glow. Okay. So I'm going to name the layer Then I'm going to go to select, load my selection of my white glow. And here is my white glow. Now what you're going to want to do 
is you can either use the paint but paint bucket tool and fill it in like that or you could just press shift f5 and fill it in with opacity of 100 like that all right so now you see you have a white glow that's making everything stand out and if you want to just see a more drastic uh stand out you can just go like that and that brings out it out even more now how we're going to add the glow is simply going into your effects outer glow i'm not kidding this is how you're going to do it okay your opacity is going to be on 100 your spread is usually either one or zero uh on the one i made yesterday of jerry judy i had it on one and it came out fine but yeah either one or zero will do the trick so it's up to you to really choose and you don't want your range to be really on anything because it just kind of looks weird having a, a range in there it just doesn't look right and then i'm seeing just a couple things i want to maybe fix like this isn't very sharp over here and this kind of just looks blocky you don't want your your glows to look blocky that that's not that's not gonna get it done for us right so if you need to make adjustments minor adjustments in there go ahead do not be afraid to do so because um like you see here i don't do everything perfect the first time right so we made our adjustments there so that is going to be our white glow that's going to be on the body and now let's add in our purple glow so i'm going to close that group up i'm going to add a new layer and i'm going to add my purple glow Whoop! i just said purple i'm going to type it purple glow so let's go to select load the selection in and let's go to purple glow so we're going to add that purple glow now it's kind of tricky to add purple glow because you don't want it to be too dark or like too bright but you're going to find that happy medium eventually and we're going to just fill it in like the same thing we did on there uh, i'll probably make it a little bit darker if i can and i'm going to go with that for right now it should be filling everything in but it's because i have the tolerance down shame on me okay and then we're going to do the same thing filter outer glow and we're going to change it to a purple like a almost almost uh towards white but still on a purple and the only thing that i would say about doing a purple glow is the blending options you might want to use blending options on it because it might be a little bit too much at first and what you can actually do i'll show we'll get into that later but if it's too much you can just um blend some of it out like i'm gonna blend some of this out on the on the crow because i see it's a little bit too much for me my liking because you can add purple glow manually when, when we're doing our highlights so that's what's gonna be for right now for the glow it's nothing serious right now but that's just like the underlying glow that's going to be actually really really on there and present okay so we're just gonna finish this out for the glows with the the visor and the visor can be kind of confusing um because it just looks like like so unrealistic at first but all you gotta use is blend if and you'll be fine so let's just do, make a make a a visor layer a visor shape from our pen tool like this like so okay we're gonna add in our visor i'm seeing that this kind of goes down that's the only thing that's kind of tough to see sometimes is where everything is going on your visor it's like what where is that shape at actually you know but you can do your best obviously and just be confident in your selections and it'll come out great if you're not going to be confident in your selections you mean you might as well forget making the design right so we're going to pick those points i like them uh, i'm going to close this group up i'm going to name this one visor and we're going to fill it with white so let's just go to shift shift f5 fill it with white and obviously that's not what we want so we're just going to add our outer glow first and then we will deal with it so we're going to add my outer glow of white as well and yeah on your blend mode you can either use a screen or normal i usually just use normal at the beginning if i need to change it i will do so but i just use normal at first usually so we're going to go with that and here's how you're going to get your visor to blend in so you're going to go to your blending options and see how this slider right here it makes it so your jersey your uh face mask is kind of blended in with your face so it's not just like 
oh we just have a huge glow like no but you're gonna go from the right side because you're gonna bring the light the light sources down so this is bringing out more of the shades since you're sliding from the right you're bringing more of the shades out so that you're getting more of a blend in with your uh with your subject so it's just like that and then you can actually see some detail and if you want you can mess around with these a little bit that sometimes they, they help sometimes they don't but in that case they weren't helping so I'm not gonna really mess with those but that's how you are gonna get your your white glow on the outside okay so now with that all of that being said we can go ahead and choose our our source of light that we want to have hitting him okay I know this is a lot of information and a lot of stuff that I'm throwing at you guys but it's a full tutorial so let's just get everything done and you guys uh, will be all set with learning how to do this so now we have our Lamar Jackson layer I'm gonna add a hue and saturation to him so hue and saturation is above create the clipping mask so right click create this clipping mask on him and we're gonna click on colorize click on colorize okay and we're gonna bring our saturation all the way up and we're gonna change a we're gonna pick a color that's purple but we're gonna bring the lightness up as well so that we get that light light purple all right so now right click on your hue and saturation go to blending options and we're gonna go slide our our underlying layer so we're gonna hold down alt or command on your Mac to slide just just one of the I don't even know what they call them crosshairs I guess I don't know it kind of looks like a crosshair I guess so this this gives you a guideline plus it's going to give you a little bit of protection where your hue and saturation is like that just looks ridiculous so if you're doing a little bit too much it's gonna give you that reminder like hey man uh, stop doing all that you know so then we're gonna invert this hue and saturation layer just like that and now you see it's black so white's gonna reveal what we had okay so white is going to reveal and also what I'm gonna do is just turn my my glows off turn I'm just gonna turn my glows off completely so I can just focus on the light source so I want the light source to be hitting from about here so I'm just gonna go ahead and bring my hardness all the way up on my brush bring my flow up to a hundred and I'm going to literally go and paint my first layer of highlights on Lamar Jackson now this is what takes like a very long time to do but just make sure when you're doing it just be confident and again once like once I said be confident to what your light lighting sources are and you will be fine and just take your time because if you don't take your time and you rush your lighting sources it's not gonna come out the way that you like envisioned it so take your time with this and this is only the primary light sources so you really want to focus on getting the light on the edge of what you're doing you don't have to focus on the insides as much but like when you see things that are gonna help you like say if there's a, a rip and you have like a light like you can obviously see that light right there just add a little light light streak and then you can blend things out later but I'm gonna go ahead and do this I'm gonna speed speed up the process because it takes a while to do but once I'm done with that I will be back Alright, so this is like my points for where I want my real, real highlights to be at. Now, you're probably saying one of two things. Like, why does that take so long? Because it looks so bad. Or you're saying, uh, what is going on here? And what I'm going to tell you is now, with your highlights, you're going to drop your brush hardness back down to zero. So, right, hold down right. Oh, yeah, you guys got to make sure you're using, like, shortcuts to make your brush sizes bigger and smaller because it's going to save you a lot of time. So, you're going to hold down Alt or Command. And you're gonna hold down your right side of your mouse so right click in this and if you drag vert uh, drag horizontally you can change the size of your brush and if you drag vertically you're going to change the hardness of your brush so that's gonna help you out tremendously when you're doing this and saving a lot of time that needs to be saved because it takes a while so I dropped my flow back down to really low like 12% maybe even lower sometimes and then I go in and I start blending in the light sources so now you're gonna see that the light sources are gonna to start to actually blend in and it's not just like a jumble of light just like I don't know just straight up no blend nothing like that <clears throat> looking disgusting for your edits so you know you don't want that obviously so now we're gonna go in and just blend all these in 
be careful just switch between your flows you can do whatever you want to do with your flows but don't lose track of what you are trying to accomplish which is the base lighting for your subject these are the these are the highest the highest lights that you're gonna have them or the most bright lights that you're gonna have okay so make sure you go ahead and do this just take your time with it like the last thing I did and once you blend in all your lights for your your lighting source then you're gonna go in and do a second one to support it but I'm, I didn't I fast forwarded on the other one but I'm just going to skip ahead to when I'm done with this another thing I might add before I uh, skip ahead is use your blur tool the blur tool is right here it's the teardrop and with the blur tool you can uh, blend in colors very easily and highlights easier because it blurs things out the only thing is it makes it kind of darker so you want to make sure you after you do that you would go over back over with like the white brush to uh, put some more of that highlight in at maximum um, capacity whatever you want to call it I do not know terms man I just do the designs <laughs> but yeah make sure you guys are aware of that but try and use the, the blur tool it'll help you out a lot all right and let's go all right, so now I have my first source light, a Lamar Jackson. I know this takes a long time, is and you when you guys are doing it. I hope you're doing it alongside of me. Maybe you are not. I don't know, but we have our first light source, and it looks very clean and very nice compared to what it was before. This is before. This is after. Without no light source, um, very cool indeed. Now what you're gonna want to do is add a supporting light source. So I mean, you could go up and make this even brighter at the beginning if you want. Um, you're you're going to be able to adjust and make adjustments within. So, um, duplicate that layer and clip it as well, but we're not going to put this on the same layer mask. We're going to actually delete the layer mask. So, right click the layer mask, delete it. And for this one, we're going to drop our lightness back down far. Not We, we don't have to drop it back down to zero, but it's going to be dropped back down pretty far. And we're going to add another layer mask because this is the supporting cast. This isn't the main light source. And we're gonna go in and do the same type of thing, but we're not gonna be on the outside as much. We're gonna be more on the inside and getting these like reflective lights in here, um, doing the same type of thing that we did on the first one. But these are gonna be more of the reflective lights that's gonna come off from this light source that's um, hitting like right here. If you see this area, that's where I want the light source to be hitting him from. So let's go ahead and do that and fill that in with some nice coloring and then I will be back. I'm gonna actually uh, show you guys the process of doing this one not a problem so i'm going to speed forward to do this one and then uh we'll 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 group back i feel like a teacher saying that we'll group back all right let's do it let's do it so you guys see on this one i'm just a lot more loose um what i'm noticing and you'll notice while you're doing it is i didn't add enough light on the the actual chin strap the chin strap is just bare which wouldn't be realistic at all so let's add a little bit of light there like I like to do this first because I can just pick my pick my sources that I want my light to be hitting right so I don't have to worry about blending at first I'm just picking my light sources and then blur actually does a lot of justice with this when you're doing just like small details like if you're doing a chin strap or something like that you don't have to uh, blend in with switching back and forth between X X to switch back and forth between the uh, what am I trying to say switch back and forth between the the colors to blend in and out okay um, so yeah I'm just gonna blend that in real quick all right cool now from this stage you could say okay I'm gonna add my my white glows back on to see what it looks like and now those white glows are like boom just popping out way more right very cool now my purple glow I honestly feel like I don't even want to add it in because I feel like it did a little bit too much painting like you know how, not when you do something it's like too much paint on it I feel like that's the that's what I'm I'm getting from this it's like too much paint so I'm gonna make the big decision and just delete the layer mask it's all right we will be fine all right so now you're just gonna add a little bit of subsequent light onto this guy right here because he is going to be in the picture as well but he's just not really focused on so just add a little bit of light to him as well add a little bit of levels and we're also going to add hue and saturation to him so let's add a hue and saturation layer 
boom gonna make it purple and he's going to get a very bright light as well so I'm not gonna be as focused on my individual light sources on him because it's the subject that's not really cared for in this piece okay I'm not saying he's not cared for probably a great defender but we don't need to focus our lighting technique on him as much okay so something like that will do I'm gonna drop my flow down even more and add a little bit less all right and I'm also gonna do blending options on him slightly we'll see what it looks like yeah okay cool all right so now we're ready for the next step all right so the next step is adding our exposure layer and you can use exposure right here or you could go on your levels and actually just cancel out some of the levels and bring back some brightness but i don't want to do that because i feel like it's kind of interfering with my mask and i'm kind of particular in keeping everything structured even though sometimes you see i just don't name anything but with your exposure layer you're gonna have to bring some of the light back because of the light sources from the eight uh the light source from the visor the gear so we have to bring some light back even though we have a purple light source it's also glowing so it's like a dual thing of glows and light on this right and that's this makes for more fun it can get confusing but it makes for more fun so i'm going to add this exposure layer and i'm going to bring that exposure up a tad not a tad actually a good amount but then i'm going to put it on some blend if and i'm going to slide make sure you guys remember hold down alt or command on the mac to slide your blend if layer okay and i'm going to invert the mask once again and from this now i'm going to uh, you can you can be really precise and use po the polygonal lasso tool like say if you're using the polygonal lasso tool and you know this is gonna be like somewhere around here so make a shape around where it's gonna really be hitting the light like the visor light and then shade in as such or you can just freestyle in and just bring in some points that are gonna be lighted up and then blend some out it's up to you um, just take your time with it and just be cautious of everything you're doing like I know this part's gonna be really light this part's gonna have some reflected light on it you know just get get you're gonna get comfortable doing your own lighting if you just uh, work on it and it's just gonna become a lot easier so just don't get discouraged if you're like really confused where your light sources should be within doing this because you know it's part of the process and you're just gonna be able to do this without much struggle after a, a small amount of time honestly it's just going to become a lot easier like i still am learning but it's become a lot easier for me to pick light sources and stuff in a small amount of time when from when i started focusing on this so i'm going to go in ahead and do my exposure layer and also stop talking as much for a couple seconds so i can focus on this and then i'll be back all right so one thing i'm noticing is from the blend if it's not allowing me to to go on certain parts so you might have to add a second exposure adjustment but not turn blend if on really at all so that you can be able to do what you need to do so just invert the mat or actually delete the mask we're gonna add the mask back and invert the mask so that you can go in and just uh, bring some light sources light to some of the places that it would not allow you because of the blend if all right uh, if you get stuck on that that is how you're going to combat that All right, so boom. I think this is looking pretty nice for where I wanna go with lighting. Sometimes I go overboard and I have a tendency to do that. So I might need to chill out and say, yeah, I like where I'm at right now with this. I'm gonna clip everything to him. Um, some of these some of these excess light sources are kinda of just stagnant. So I'm gonna blur some of them out really quick. Um, so it's not just like uniform lines going around because that doesn't look good You know you want everything to just blend in So we have exposure soldier copy My second light source There's some areas that need to be a little bit darker so that because I don't want my my jersey to look like it's half half uh, purple half half black, right? So let's go in and 
delete out some of these highlights so that you know it's actually a light source and not just making his jersey just look crazy like two-tone jersey that's not what we're going for so I might need to add a little bit of supporting light on the other side and don't be afraid to talk to yourself talk to yourself during this okay you know people might look at you crazy like why are you talking to yourself while you're doing uh, design it's like you got to work out all the kinks and it's a very important part working out all the kinks because then when you work them all out you'll be like wow I took the time and did that and it looks better than if I was just putting light on random spots okay so we have that so now let's jump into what you would do if you want to add a light source so you can add a light source from here but the main main thing I want to say about doing a light source is your light source has to be brighter than your brightest highlight on a subject so we see this point right here my highlight has to be brighter than that because without that because if it was darker that wouldn't make any sense just logically that just doesn't make any sense so you have to make sure that that would be brighter okay so that's gonna be my light source for right now and then we're gonna go into adding the smoke and everything to make this all just look dope and just sick okay so we're gonna do that all right before we add the smoke though let's go back to the visor and I'm gonna clip a, a layer to it and I'm gonna add a little bit of purple inside of the visor all right cuz with the visor it's not gonna all be white like that one it really makes sense so I'm just seeing that now and I'm like yeah let's add a little bit of purple to it I don't know what would look good for this there's it's always gonna vary what's gonna look good for your um, for your blend but you can just go to blending options and kind of figure it out and sometimes blending options just takes care of you like a like a newborn baby all right it takes care of you like a newborn baby guys but I think that looks all right that looks fine just the just a little tiny glow to get that going and then with our white glows you're gonna add a layer above it and I'm gonna invert the mask not invert invert my colors go back to white and on my white glows I'm gonna actually add supporting supporting lights to it so I'm gonna go on a linear dodge it's gonna be a linear dodge um, uh, selection or a layer whatever you want to call it it's going to be on linear dodge so I can add just like those supporting glows onto what's going on already all right so once you have that go back to blending options like we do so often and blend these glows in with what is going on yeah it's gonna be very slight because the glow is kind of crazy already okay and then we're gonna add another layer onto the visor and this should be on let's see maybe we'll do blend blend if but if not if we don't need to I don't want to but I think we need to do a little bit of blend if on this one so something like that all right and then you can erase some of it and not erase but get some of that out I'm gonna drop my opacity because it makes the inside look a little weird drop my opacity down somewhat and there we go all right so now we're on to our smoke and to add our smoke in I'm using free Photoshop brushes six you guys can get this on brusheasy.com or I don't care because I got you guys I can upload it on the description so you guys can just download it I'll put it in the Google Drive folder because you know I got you guys and what you're gonna want to do is just rotate it and just make a nice little selection of smokes or ever you see fit for your little heart to do and once you're satisfied I'm not satisfied yet so I'm gonna keep doing it so once you kinda get a basis of where you want all your smokes to be and stuff you can uh, go ahead and kinda delete the under part of your of your player 
of your subject, whatever your subject is gonna be. So just kind of brush brush out where you see his feet because the smoke's gonna affect his feet, obviously. So kind of brush out where you see the smoke affecting him. And even on here, you're gonna wanna want him to blend in somewhat with the smoke. So even on like these parts, you gotta you gotta really be careful with this, but you're gonna also wanna just kind of br brush out some of him for where you see the smoke just affecting. So you're gonna need to be careful. Like I said, you might need to go back in, adjust, go to a different brush. I've only been using one brush this whole time, <laughs> uh, and my screen is acting funny. Come on, brushes, you can do it. Oh my goodness. There we go. And you might need to switch between brushes and whatnot. You know, nothing's going to be set in stone. Just see, just kind of feel out what feels the best to do in this, in the situation. Maybe even go back into your uh, normal brushes and the soft brush and just soft brush things back in or out, right? So really, it really is uh, up to your preference. Like there's no rules to this, but you wanna be smart still in what you decide to, to do with your, br your brushes and your blending out and things like that, all right? So I'm gonna pick that for my, my smokes. And with my smokes now, I'm going to actually add a little tint of purple to them. You know, just like to get that purple feel in there. And this is actually kind of too bright. So with this purple tint, I'm going to go and let's see. I like I like the way it blends in like that. So I don't want to ruin that. So I'm going to go and just convert it to a smart object. And I'm going to just bring my saturation down or my not my saturation, but my lightness down. I like the way that it blends out like that. All right, so hold on. Let's see. Hue and saturation, I'm gonna bring my lightness down. Something to that effect. And now on the top only, I'm gonna have the lightest of the purple. So only on the top, I'm gonna have that real, real dynamic purple, light purple shade, and it's gonna just blend down into that. I'm just saying that like it's nothing but it's something there all right so that's what I'm gonna do and just kind of just mess around with it how you see fit there's no rules to it like I said just mess around with it how you see fit and what you really think is gonna look the best okay so once you've done that part since I have this subject here I'm going to actually just kind of just desaturate him because he's not very important to the scene sorry not sorry but he's not very important to the scene but I'm, then I'm gonna just invert it and uh, brush in my hue and saturation so I get a little bit of variance between so it's not just like one solid coating of shaded no hue you know you want to get some of some variance all right, so something like that can definitely work. Okay, and then from there, what you're gonna wanna do is, you can either add some effects in here, but I like to add another smoke layer behind because you know the, the black background just kinda looks just naked. So I'm gonna look for, in my files, a new, a new smoke background. And I might use a, a series of brushes versus what I use for a series of um, pictures. But in this case, I'm going to try out this smoke image and I'm going to see what it's going to look like. Definitely put it on screen. If you're using a black image, put it on screen so that you can only see what's behind or what's uh, supposed to be in front, not the black screen to give you weird dimensions and all that. No, we don't want that. So that looks cool. That definitely looks cool. It gives it a nice little touch on it. And actually, let's add in some purple on that as well. But but let's just change it. Change the color. Hue and saturation. 
let's just change the color to like that purple right there that we see and we love okay and you can add just oh okay let's see right there looks really good okay so that is that for the smoke so from that point i mean the smoke is kind of hard to explain because you're kind of going freestyle but from this point what you're going to want to do is really kind of just see what you like about having effects on it you can use some effects from your effects jar that i have i have the light the breeze i can link this with you guys if you guys want this file as well um in the discord you guys can get this file you can add different brushes and all that type of stuff but this is where you gotta be in control and just be free with it there's no you have to do this you have to do that at this point just have fun with it and but once i get to camera off filter i'll show you guys what i do on there but for right now i'm gonna just freestyle and see what i want to do and after i'm done finishing up this design will go on the camera raw filter and that's really how you're gonna get your glow designs done so let's just get 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 what you want to do done and then we'll be back with the camera raw filter okay guys so now we have gotten to the part where everything we want to be on here is on here I mean you're obviously maybe would go back and forth but just for this tutorial purpose I'm done for right now so what you're gonna want to do is make a new layer from everything that's on here so you're gonna press control hold down alt or command on the Mac and shift and then we're going to press on um, E so control shift alt E or command on the Mac all right and then just make this into a smart object then let's go into our camera raw filter so now on camera raw filter what I like to do is use the basics but I don't like to change too much up um, also I don't know why this is so zoomed but yeah I don't like to change too much up but just what I see fit and camera raw filter can be a very good asset for your designs um, my exposure I'm gonna keep that down because I already have a lot but you already see how it's just taking shape and with camera raw filter just really I would say you can do a lot of things but just experiment and you're gonna be all right just experimenting so this is really just bringing it to life and it just is looking a lot better than what we had before and vibrance let's see that's fine right there also camera off filters literally on your phone it's just called Lightroom on your phone I don't know why they kind of make it a different naming but whatever and then for your split toning this is one thing that I want to make clear for split toning you can actually set your highlight colors and your shadow colors and then set a balance so this is very good because with highlights you can just make like different types of colors on there to make your edits just vary and it just makes it look a little really cool sometimes sometimes it doesn't work out as well sometimes it does but this can uh, be a great asset to you okay so make sure you're using camera raw filter and split toning if you want I don't want to use split toning in this case because I like where my colors are at with this but if, if that may be that may be different for what you want to do okay so make sure you go into camera raw filter and get some more work done alright so now at this point my design is actually completed so we went through how to do all of your glows and everything this is probably gonna be I don't even know how long it's gonna be thinking about it now but it's probably gonna be a longer tutorial so make sure if you didn't watch from the beginning make sure you do that because this is going to get you a glow design looking like this okay and it's not very hard it just is, it takes a lot of time and it just takes a lot of patience so that, without further ado make sure you guys drop a like down below let me know what other tutorials you want to see from me and if you have any questions always ask and until next time man it's been Castle Scope stay scope y'all peace